so that uh those capped off a great training cycle for squats um you know that 575 uh before the training cycle and then uh 600 much smoother cleaner felt better at the end of the training cycle um so i'm just gonna repeat the same training cycle again obviously just bumping the numbers up from last time anyway what i wanted to discuss is uh rpe rate of perceived exertion um it's really in its simplest form it's an easy concept but so many people mess it up whether it's for clout whether it's for not knowing any better um you know lying to themselves you have to be honest with yourself with rpe uh, i talked about it a little bit on a live stream last night um and there's tools now um you know units that will measure your bar speed and things like that and at that point you can pretty well take the perceived part of it out and it's just rate of exertion um, and you know that given past data once you build up over time that if i move x weight for y speed then i'm good for this or i could have done two more reps etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, so there's no more p in rpe uh, however for most of us you know rpe is perceived exertion um, and generally speaking, uh, RPE 10, there's no reps left. RPE 9, you could have done one more. RPE 8, you could have done two more, etc. Um, so, yeah, that's how it goes. Um, and where I see people messing up is, you know, like that second single, I'd, or the, the 600 I did. Uh, people would call that an RPE 9, uh, and it's not. It's, it's an RPE 10. The 575, that was a grinder that was ugly. It was slow. It was an RP10 as well. They're both RP10s. Both of those instances, I could not have done another rep. Uh, the 575, I couldn't have done no more weight either. That was probably it for the day. Uh, the 600, I, I probably could have done 610 or 615. Um, there was more in the tank as far as weight goes. Uh, but as far as reps, there were zero reps left. I could not have done another one. Um, and there's no point in saying something like RPE nine and a half, uh, like I see a lot of people do, um, put a, it's, what's, what's another half rep? I had a half rep in the tank. That's stupid. There was, I couldn't have doubled it. That's that. It moved well. The bar speed was consistent. Um, there's a little bit of slowdown in there, um, as there's going to probably be in an RPE 10. Uh, but it was, it was an RPE 10. They're both. You know, I put them together at the same time just so you could see. Um, I'm walking one back to the rack already by the time the other one's finishing. Uh, way different bar speeds, way different reps, but they're both RP10. That leads me into this. I see a lot of people posting in Facebook groups uh, and lifting groups. Um, they'll post a single or a double or triple or something. They'll say, rate my RPE. And it's like... I can't rate your fucking RPE if I've never seen you train before. If I've not been observing your training over the last year, I don't know what the fuck your RPE is because you take somebody like Andre Milanichev, his RPE 10 looks like he could triple it, but that's all he's got. And then you take somebody like Dan Green, uh, who looks like he does RPE 10, and then he bangs out six more reps, and every single one of them looks like a fucking RPE 10. So you, you can't just say, hey, what's my RPE? Uh, to a random group of people who've never seen you train before because we're all going to be different in that manner. Some people are more fast twitch, some people are grinders. Um, and again, two very different looking reps from the same person even can be the same fucking RPE like I just showed you at the beginning of this video. Both of those are RPE 10 for me. So I just wanted to throw that out there if you're somebody who uses RPE. I know a lot of people now, it's in programming, you know, to train up to an RPE, uh, you know, eight for two sets of three, things like that. Um, and that, you know, it, it can be a little tough if you don't know yourself really well. Um, and you might undershoot or overshoot it. Uh, but when rating it after the fact... Uh, this is something that people, if, if you've trained for any amount of time, you should not be getting wrong. You should be honest with yourself. After you do a rep, after you do a triple, you should know pretty well how many you had left in the tank. 
you know, short of doing like a triple with 50% and, you know, maybe you could have done 30 fucking more reps or something. Uh, that's irrelevant. But if, if you're working in upper percentages, you should know how many reps you have left or very, very close. You should not be getting that wrong very often at all. Um, and you should be honest with yourself and, uh, you know, not calling things something that they're not to make yourself feel better about it.